On December 22, 1770, a prince was born to a Russian royal family whose enormous wealth and influence went back centuries. But though the newborn Demetrius Galitsyn was the son of thoroughly European royalty, he would go on to leave a unique spiritual legacy for the church in the United States. The young prince's parents saw to it that Demetrius had the best possible education while keeping him far from religion. But when he was a teenager, his mother returned to the Catholic faith she had abandoned in her youth, tremendously impacting her son. As the prince reached adulthood, his parents decided to send Demetrius to the newest country in the world for a year or two of study abroad. So in 1792, as George Washington was still serving his first term, a ship waited in a Netherlands harbor to take Prince Galitzin to the United States of America. When the prince got cold feet just before boarding the ship, his mother had to step in one last time. When Demetrius Galitzin, before he came to America, was about to leave, he was actually having second thoughts. And his mother, with all the love in her heart, uh, didn't let him have second thoughts. She thrust him into the water in the waiting boat that would take him to the larger ship. And um, people call this his second baptism, as his first baptism was kind of a hoop to jump through, a to-do, a show. But this really was his, his christening into who he would be as Father Galitzin. The fruits of this second baptism were immediate. Upon his arrival in the United States, the young prince stunned everybody who knew him by going straight to the only bishop in the country and offering to stay forever as a Catholic priest. Demetrius entered the seminary in Baltimore and excelled in both study and spiritual devotion. In 1795, he became the very first Catholic priest in history to have been educated and ordained entirely in the United States. In doing so, he willingly gave up both his vast inheritance and his royal title to join what was essentially a missionary priesthood. He was now one of only three dozen Catholic priests in the whole country, but he soon distinguished himself among them. Father Galitzin can be a model for um, constantly learning, and I think that's a really important aspect of his life. Even though he was very busy and he was constantly traveling around his large area of, of service to um, constantly traveling to um, help parishioners, he found time to do a lot of reading and that enabled him to write great apologetic works for the young church in America. So I think he can inspire all Catholics today to see the value in studying the Catholic faith. As a young missionary, Father Galitzin once visited a clutch of Catholic families in the far off mountains of Western Pennsylvania. Seeing the potential for building a true Catholic community, Father Galitzin asked to be assigned there permanently. In 1799, the 29-year-old priest arrived at McGuire's settlement, named for the Catholic Revolutionary War captain who had founded it. A log cabin church was built in time to celebrate Christmas Mass. It was the first permanent Catholic church between eastern Pennsylvania and the Mississippi River. As the settlement gradually grew into a town, he named it Loretto to honor the Virgin Mary, to whom he had a tremendous devotion. Father Galitzin's love for Mary um, was evident in his renaming the McGuire Settlement um, uh, Loretto after Our Lady of Loretto, which was the, um, the title of Mary that he really um, gravitated towards. And he also received uh, medals and rosaries from his mother um, back in Russia, and he would distribute those to the prisoners and to the children to kind of um, spread his devotion to Our Lady. And I think that probably came from his time as a uh, seminarian at St. Mary's University in, um, or St. Mary's Seminary in Baltimore, um, where he, he learned at a seminary dedicated to Our Lady. And that really probably helped to, to grow a devotion for Our Lady in his heart. I kind of see like just an image of her just kind of like raising <laughs> Father Gulitson just like up to Jesus, like, you know, you need to come closer to him. This is what you need to do to come closer. In those earliest years, Father Galitzin was expected to minister to any Catholic for some hundred miles in any direction from Loretto. As a result, he traveled many miles on horseback for baptisms, confessions, and last rites. Above all, he celebrated the Eucharist wherever Christ was needed. With nearly no other Catholic church or chapel available in the wilderness, the formerly wealthy prince celebrated the holy sacrifice in fields, under trees, and in many Catholic cabins during his decades of ministry. 
These missionary paths led to what are today more than a dozen Catholic churches. I really feel like, especially with him being in the presence of Christ all the time, you know, like sometimes when you accept the Eucharist and you're going for communion and everything, you kind of like, it's not always about feeling, but I know through my personal experience, you kind of feel like this joy inside you. And I kind of feel like that's something he felt inside him. Um, he just always felt an urge to be around the poor and to be around the people who needed him the most. So I feel like through the Eucharist, through Jesus, um, you know, him digesting Jesus and Jesus being inside him, that almost like that really helps. It's some type of like joy that I feel like resonated and really helped the community. As Catholics, we believe that the Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith. And Father Galitzin didn't just believe it, he really and truly lived it. He, you know, he went on horseback from village to village, um, town to town, everyone who he needed the sacraments, he, he went to, to them where they needed him. The pastor of Loretto also had crosses to carry. His refusal to leave his flock meant that he never saw any of his family again, including his mother, whose death deeply grieved him. Early on, he purchased a large amount of land and goods to sell to prospective Catholic settlers for almost nothing. Unfortunately, he made these purchases on credit, based on money that his mother had promised to send from Europe. When his mother died, the disinherited priest had no way to pay his creditors. He would spend the rest of his life paying off his debts, often through what seemed to be miraculous means. He never really stopped saying yes to God. And as he kept saying yes to God, I feel like God kept providing more for him, um, whether it was like more people who came to that little Catholic community or more opportunities to help others um, or more opportunities to bring the mass to others. I feel like Father Galitzin is like a really good example of holiness. Father Galitzin consciously imitated the saints by being a strict disciplinarian in his own spiritual life with prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and sacrifice constant from the beginning of his priesthood until the end. He was no less a disciplinarian when it came to the Catholics in his care, but they accepted this because it clearly came from a place of love. I think that um, Jesus, in his love for those around him, was able to get frustrated sometimes, but not in a mean way. He called people on to really be better than where they were. Of course, you know, he loved them first, and I think the same goes with Father Galitzin. His people also saw the deep love the priest had for the poor. He gave money, food, clothing, even hay or firewood to those in need, always giving the best of whatever he had available. Father Galitzin really imitated Christ in his ministry by serving the poorest of the poor, and he willingly spent his time with subsistent farmers, and uh, as well as um, men working on the railroad and in the PA canal system. And he spent time with those people and prioritized time with those people over time with uh, parishioners with more money. And I think in that way, we see that he is uh, similar to Christ who um, spent his time with the people who needed his love the most, more so than people who would uh, give him prestige or power or some sort of uh, gain for himself. Galitzin was also a skilled defender of the Catholic faith. Throughout his priesthood, he produced several significant and widely circulated apologetic works. This enabled him to receive an impressive number of converts into the church by presenting the Catholic faith confidently with both truth and love. The way that he um, continued to write apologetics and then challenged Protestant leaders to question him, to question the church, um, knowing that he would have the truth, the answers, um, for whatever they were challenging, that just spoke to his confidence in his vocation in the church. As Galitzin entered his 60s, it was estimated that he was still doing the work of three full-time missionaries. Father Galitzin had openly hoped to die a martyr someday and said that the only other fitting death for a priest was to collapse in the midst of his ministry, uniting his suffering to the cross of Jesus every step of the way. Yeah, I would say he imitated the life of Christ by embracing uh, hardships and suffering in his life, um, being separated from his family, uh, just as, as Christ was separated from uh, his mother during his, uh, his ministry. Um, 
and just um, being able to embrace that suffering and see it as a way to help his parishioners uh, to grow. Um, one example of that would be his um, dragging himself to the altar to celebrate the Eucharist one last time on the last Easter before he passed away. Um, really just dragging himself to that altar just as Christ dragged himself up to Golgotha to offer himself for all of us. I think he imitates Christ in that way. In the spring of 1840, the faithful pastor stayed in the confessional throughout Holy Week and then, with the last of his strength, celebrated the Easter liturgy. He took to his bed, never to rise from it again. Father Demetrius Galitzin died on May 6, 1840, having baptized an estimated 6,000 souls during his lifetime. The humble log cabin that was the first church in Loretto was replaced several times over the years by larger buildings, the last of which was named a minor basilica by Rome in recognition of its significance for the American church. The population of Loretto remains small, but is now home to several monasteries, a Catholic university, and four Marian shrines. The Diocese of Altoona Johnstown now covers the largest part of Father Galitzin's mission territory, and he is responsible for laying the foundation for more than a dozen of its churches. But statues, icons, and images of Father Galitzin can be found in parish churches and cathedrals as far away as Baltimore and Chicago. In 2005, the Congregation for the Causes of Saints in Rome formally named Father Demetrius Galitzin a servant of God and his cause for canonization has been officially presented. Today, the Holy Priest's body rests in a special tomb in Loretto, where it has been a regular pilgrimage site since his death. Atop the tomb stands a bronze statue of the prince who became a priest, still watching over the Catholics entrusted to his care. But he really um, is a father to me now. Now that I live here, now that I am here, I feel under his patronage. I, I know that he's praying for me in a special way because I go to, the, to some of the churches that he helped establish. It's really humbling to, to know that um, I am continuing a legacy in my, in my faith, in my relationship with Christ. And he's helping me along the way. He's praying for me.